Before I get into this video, I just want to remind you we're giving away a Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED Edition. We're also giving away a Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition. Oh, and don't forget, we're also going to be giving away a pin from PAX East. So, yeah, that's a pretty great giveaway package. Go ahead and enter down in the pin comment or in the description. There's a link for it. The winners will be announced on May 12th. There'll be three different winners. Also, <laughs> we're on a road to 133,000 subscribers to match 133 years of Nintendo. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you would. Drop a like and maybe hit that bell icon if you please to get notified of all of our videos. After all, we're a Nintendo YouTuber over here. All right, today we have a bit of a gathering of news for you around Tears of the Kingdom. We've got three different things we need to get to, and let's not beat around the bush. Let's get right into it. And the first one comes from a Q&A that Brian Altano from IGN did on a recent episode of the Nintendo Voice Chat, which is their Nintendo podcast. Nice reminder, we have our own podcast every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hopefully we'll catch you there next week. All right, so there's a couple things that he talked about from his time playing Tears of the Kingdom that we're going to be able to cover here because this is not from any sort of leaks. This is just stuff he's allowed to talk about. So one big thing that we learned from this Q&A is that the music in the game is much jazzier than Breath of the Wild. So basically more horn instruments and just, you know, not necessarily so reliant on melodic piano all the time and he said he just can't wait to hear more of the soundtrack as he plays obviously where you know the areas he's able to talk about are very limited right now now one thing he also noted and this is a nice carryover from breath of the wild is that there's a lot of everyone who plays the game is solving all the puzzles in completely different ways and that is something that was really big in breath of the wild uh, so many people finding clever ways to use unintended abilities uh, to solve puzzles just completely different than probably what the puzzle was designed for. That was a lot of fun for some people. Other people actually found that to be maybe a bit more of a, really, I like the there's only one way to do things sort of path. But in the end, it was mostly loved by a lot of the people who played Breath of the Wild, and that does return in Tears of the Kingdom. All right, another thing that he said and this is maybe the most hyped and exciting thing that we learned out of this Q&A. And the final thing that's really new that we haven't talked about yet is he said there's almost an overwhelming amount of stuff to do in those beginning Sky Islands, which sort of sets up how the Sky Islands and maybe the whole game in general feels. He said from what he played, the game felt incredibly dense with content. So enemy varieties, things to do, quests, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, way denser than Breath of the Wild was. And, you know, that is one of the number one complaints from Breath of the Wild is that it was maybe a little too empty for some people. I happen to enjoy some of that emptiness. It, it, it really added to the atmosphere for me, but not everyone really did. And so the good news for those that were really worried that this game was just going to be more oh, it's just exactly as empty as Breath of the Wild. Well, according to Brian Altano, that's not the case, at least from what he played. The game is extremely dense with so many things to do. It, it, it can sometimes be overwhelming because there's just so much to do in this game. And I'm not really surprised given what we know from the leaks, but again, we don't talk about that stuff here uh, at this channel. All right, now we got to get into our next story. And this is one that's really cool. And people like to know this sometimes just for collector's reasons. There is actually going to be an official guidebook available at launch for Tears of the Kingdom. Now, this has not been announced by Nintendo, but it did appear on a, a Spanish website. And you can see here, it's going to be a hardcover and a softcover version of it. It looks really, really good. It's got one of those symbols we've seen Nintendo using. Looks like a, a gold brown emboss uh, hardcover that they're showing off. Looks really, really good. Obviously, this hasn't been announced for the United States at this point. It is an officially licensed guide, so Nintendo did give them permission and obviously access to the game to make the guide. So that's really cool. Look, I used to collect these walkthrough guides, didn't really use them. I still have one uh, for Spirit Tracks that uh, I, I really adore, just every now and then thumbing through it. I remember as a kid enjoying these a lot more than as an adult, but it is still really neat just to have and look at, and after you beat a game, sometimes reminisce a bit without necessarily having to load up your Switch. So that is kind of cool. Uh, some of you guys might import it, or maybe some of you guys live 
uh, where this is going to be available. Uh, this you know has been available at several different Spanish retailers. So uh, if you happen to be in one of those countries, you can go ahead and take a look. All right, this last story we have to talk about. This one's really interesting because it's about getting Tears of the Kingdom cheaper. Now, every time there's a major release for Nintendo, like one of their biggest of big games, we typically have a video come out that it says, hey, here's how you can get Tears of the Kingdom cheaper than $70. Or don't pay $70 for Tears of the Kingdom. In fact, it might be a video I still end up making because I don't think that's the headline for this one. But something cropped up that just adds to the copious amount of ways that you can buy Tears of the Kingdom without spending $70. And that is that Costco, uh, someone took a picture at Costco of a display setup that they have for, well, Tears of the Kingdom. Now, this display setup probably doesn't have any games in it yet. This is just where they're going to be putting the games to be bought. Uh, but the setup notes that Tears of the Kingdom is going to cost $59.99. Now, how can this happen when it's $70 or $69.99? Well, if you guys remember this entire Switch generation or most of it, Walmart has had a special deal with certain game publishers, including Nintendo, where they could sell Switch games $10 cheaper in store. So if you didn't pre-order it, but you walked in store and bought one on launch, you could get it $10 cheaper than anywhere else. It was a special Walmart deal. Now, I have to confirm if that Walmart deal is still going on. Maybe you guys can confirm that down in the comments because I do want to make a buyer's guide for Tears of the Kingdom for anyone who's doing some last-minute uh, shopping and trying to figure out how they can save money. Uh, so we might do, do that. But what I want to note here is now Costco appears to be selling it for $59.99, likely striking a similar deal with Nintendo, at least for this game, to be able to sell it $10 cheaper. Now, how do these deals happen? Look, frankly, the retailer just takes the loss. That's how it works. Nintendo doesn't take less money. Uh, that $10 price point is probably a majority of the retailer's profit margin. And so when they take that $10 less, they're just cutting out their profits to get you into their store and hoping that you're going to buy other things. It's a marketing ploy. But they did get special permission, obviously, to do that. So that's good on Costco and good on gamers for having another way to get it cheaper than $70. Now, one last thing to throw up, and this is just really neat. Uh, someone on the Tears of the Kingdom Reddit uh, showed a picture of their local Best Buy. Why? Because their local Best Buy has a giant, massive Tears of the Kingdom mural on the outside glass. And it it here it is. It looks great, man. Uh, it, it's exactly the sort of imagery you would expect them to use because they've been using that link with his hand up and, and, and the logo with the swirls. Like they've been using this in marketing everywhere. But man, it's so cool to see marketing like this. Obviously, not every Best Buy or Target or any you know of these various stores are always going to have that. But some of the stores will get marketing like this. And to me, that's just incredible. I, I like Nintendo's marketing for Tears of the Kingdom in this last month. As much as they might have been criticized before you know April and May. And they've really been hitting it out of the park. And... I, I this is just a gorgeous mural, man. I, I wanna I wanna take this and piece it together and put it in my house, right? I want I wanna make one of my walls. Let's make our new backdrop of uh, this giant mural. I gotta get a hold of this Best Buy and see if uh, they can send me those window clings. I'll find a way to reuse them. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully, I catch you on my live stream tonight at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, you guys are amazing and awesome. We'll catch you in the next video.